What's going on today, YouTube? Got myself a 2005 Chevy Impala base model with the 3.4 liter. Customer complaint is that they're stating that when they start it, it sometimes stalls. Um, if the key is cycled a couple times, it seems to start and run just fine. Now the vehicle is stalled while driving as well. So I'm gonna hope I'm hoping this will act up here. It just was, so let me cycle this key on and start it and let you see. You can see our she's running, she's running like crap and there it stalled out. But you noticed check engine light was flashing. Um, the other thing I've noticed is that the low fuel on the cluster will also illuminate. So let's try again. She ain't even gonna start now. Not the crank no crank no start on. Try to keep it running here. And I'm, I'm giving it some throttle. And you can see that low fuel is on. So I'm going after powers to the PCM on this. Um, but let me uh, show you what codes were in this. All right, and like I said, it's got the three four in it. But the codes we had in there. Um, you can see we have a class two serial com problem lost. PCM communications in the airbag module. Um, lost class two serial comms on the BCM. Lost comms with ECM PCM. Generic class two com fault. Again, PCM communication problems. PCM communication problems. Um, so, time to check powers to the PCM. All right, so I've got a power distribution mat. Uh, diagram up and you can see here that this cluster fuse powers up our instrument panel and the B um, and the PCM plus the BCM now the BCM controls that class 2 um, communication since we have a cluster that's acting up and doing some weird things now <clears throat> I will tell you that if I keep cycling the key you know, it will eventually just start and run just fine I'm actually glad that it acted up on camera here but um, I'm worried about this power feed right now now there's other ones I want to check too, but um, this is in the left instrument panel fuse box. This uh, PCM BCM cluster fuse 10 amper. So let's start by uh, checking this fuse. Now that fuse gets its power from the ignition switch. Okay, if we go up here, what is that J305? You can see right there. It's it says two PC. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, did I look at the wrong one there? L, okay, so we wanna look at L. And you can see L is right here. So this says two PCM, BCM cluster fuse, diagram two of five. And you can see that that power feed is gonna be hot whenever the key is in the start or on position. So key on engine running or key on engine off. Straight battery feed from, So we'll go after this if we don't have power here. So let's check the power at that fuse. All right, before we check that fuse, I wanna look at where that um, the ignition switch here is getting this power feed from. Because if you look up here, it says it's from the ignition switch fuse, one of five, A. So we wanna go from ignition switch fuse, diagram one of five. One of five. And we're looking for A. Oh, where is it? Two ignition switch diagram, two of five. Ignition switch fuse, 60 amp. That's from our um, junction block under the hood. So I'm not too, you know, is it possible I have a 60 amp fuse issue, you know, a power feed issue from here? It is possible, guys. But um, considering that this feed here, uh, where does that feed come from? Straight from the battery. So that tells me that that 60 amp fuse is hot all the time, which means these power feeds coming in to our actual ignition switch are gonna be hot at all times, okay? So since I know that um, I'm at that fuse, okay? Uh, where the hell is that fuse that we we're gonna go after this one right here, right? 
I know this is going to be hot and key on engine off and key on engine run, so that's, that's the conditions we need to have when we check that fuse. Alright, so that fuse we're after is this guy right here. Hopefully you guys can see that, that 10 amp cluster BCM fuse, okay? Which is going to be that guy right there, this guy right here, okay? So we're going to go ahead and check powers using our test light. I've got the test light tied in to our cigarette lighter with the power probe adapter here. Just make sure this test light's working, and it is, and I'm hooked to battery negative. <clears throat> so let's go ahead. Now we're going to have to turn this key on. So let's go ahead and try to start it. It should be acting up still. Yeah, it's acting up right now. Let's see if we can get on this fuse here. Uh, hold on, let me get set up. And all right, so there's one side of the fuse. And we've got a good power feed, at least with a test light. Let's check the other side. And there's the other side on that fuse, okay? Now key is on, engine off, right? So let's try running it, and I'll hold this on here and watch this power feed. And now it's running great, guys. So let me cycle the ignition again. And there you go. As soon as I cycled the ignition, I got it to act up. But we did not lose our power feed on that side of the fuse. So let's try it again on the other side. All right, she won't even stay running, so... As soon as I crank it, it just stalls right out. But we're not losing our power feed on this fuse, okay? So that means we have to go further down, uh, further on this, and see where we want to take this. So let me go back to the wiring diagram. One note before we get crazy here. Let me go to that diagram. The one factor, and these things are notorious for failing, is this ignition switch, okay? It switches a lot of powers to everything. Computer, PCM, everything, right? Now, right now it's acting up, so start it look at that as soon as I wiggled the ignition switch it ran fine now let me try it again let's wiggle her a little bit oh that was interesting there it stalled let's try it again let's just give her a little wiggle Gotta wiggle her a little. Interesting. You know, and all I'm doing is kind of tapping on this ignition switch, and it's running great right now. And you can see our fuel gauge is up. No check engine light, no stumbling. Well, she's rough, but if I just barely wiggle this. Do we have an ignition switch that's about to fail? Let me, or is failing I should say. Now I must have fixed it. Hold on. Let's take it out. Let's put it back in. Come on guy. Act up for me baby. There it is. Stumbled a little bit. to get it to act up again. Damn it, I fixed it. Of course. All right, well, let me get it to act up again. There we go. I think I got it to act up. Let's try it again. There it is. There it is. Okay. So the ignition switch... It's probably our issue, guys. I'm not going to lie to you, but we need to check the power feeds coming from it, going to the PCM, and find out, you know, for sure. Now, we could tear this ignition switch out, um, but let me go look at the, um, the starting circuit, see where these ignition feeds go, and which way I want to take this. All right, so we've already checked um, this cluster fuse, and we've got power at the cluster. Well, we've got power at the fuse, okay? 
The other one I'm concerned about is this ABS slash PCM fuse. It's a 10 amp. I think that's gonna be this one because you can see the PCM gets its data uh, power feed from it. Here, here's a power feed to the PCM and then here's a power feed to our brake control module. Now, this power feed um, powers up our crank relay, stop lamp switch. So that power feed right there is an ignition power feed because if you look, this 10 amp fuse that we're gonna check also comes from our ignition switch, okay? And it's hot in on or start, so same as the other fuse. So let's go after that fuse next and see what it's doing. ABS PCM fuse 10 amp in the left instrument panel. All right, so that fuse is right here. Another fuse that we wanna check is gonna be this top 10 amp because that one there says, oh, I don't know if you can see that PCM, BCM cluster up in the top there and PCM crank. So it's a few fuses you wanna check, but let's check that ABS PCM fuse there. Um, let me see, where is that one? That's gonna be, is that third one down? So yeah, that's gonna be this guy right here. All right, key is on, engine off. That fuse should be hot right now, and it is on that side. Let's go on the other side of the fuse. You can see we got a light there. Now let's check these other ones right away. There's one. There's one. This one shouldn't... I believe this one's not going to be hot. This is the crank PCM crank fuse. Yeah, this one's probably not going to be hot until we crank it. So... Let's check that one fuse to the ABS, the PCM ABS fuse. Let's check that with it running, acting up. You guys missed that because I had it paused, but <clears throat> I just started it and the light didn't really change all that much. I'm gonna go to the other side of it. Okay, missed it again. Sorry guys, I'm trying, but it stalls so quick. So that fuse is good. Let me check this PCM one up at the top here. Uh, let me see if I can get on it. Ah, uh, there we go. Now we got it. There it is. All right. So let me try starting it. All right, guys, I think I just found my issue. So I want to show you this PCM, BCM cluster 10 amp fuse at the very top left there, okay? That is what I am on, okay? Notice that key's on, engine off. You got a nice bright test light. Now watch this as I play around with the ignition switch. Off, on, off, on, off. Just watch, you'll see it. Uh, it's gonna lie to, it's gonna make me look like a fool. Come on, I just had it. See, now it's starting just fine. damn ignition switch to act up. Let me just wiggle it right here. Keep an eye on the test light as I wiggle the ignition switch. Cycling it. Come on. Ah. Just had it. There it is. There it is right there. See it? There. Now it came back to life. So that's the circuit we're after right there. Let me go look at the wiring diagram, see how that one gets its feed. Well guys, I made a mistake because initially, the first test we did on that first fuse was actually this BCM fuse. I just misread it on the thing. So we are actually on this fuse now. As you can see, it says PCM, BCM cluster fuse, 10 amp, right? And I'm tapped in with my test light right here, right? Hooked to battery negative, and that's where we're getting that dim test light intermittently. Now, this dark green wire here, you go up. We went up here before. Uh, where did that come from? It came from L, right? L, right here, right? Two PCM, BCM cluster fuse. You can see that feed comes right from our ignition switch. So the next step, guys, the next easiest step is to go right to our ignition uh, switch and test here at connector one at pin E, okay? So let me go tear that out. All right, so <clears throat> I went ahead and told it, tore this baby apart. You can see we just had to take off just a few things just to get to it. 
didn't take that long pretty great pretty gravy now we got the ignition switch out right now these ignition switch guys i understand they fail all the time i could probably just shotgun this and be done with it but we'll test it we'll confirm it just to make sure our wiring from the switch to that fuse that we were looking at <clears throat> is in fact good okay if it's good um we're done now we could put a straight jumper uh, we could just disconnect this, find our green wire, and give it a straight power feed. Um, the fact that that light would light up nice and bright tells me that, um, you know, my power feed from the ignition switch, um, you know, my wiring, as far as my wiring is concerned, it's it's good, okay? Um, the fact that it's intermittent tells me that this guy's our problem. So we're pretty much done right there. But we'll test right at the connector here just to show you um, the same drop in power feed. And uh, we're done, we need an ignition switch, okay? So real quick, okay, if you look at our ignition switch on our power distribution manual here, or uh, wiring diagram, you're gonna see C1, that's the connector we're after because this is the dark green wire that we're going after, C1. So pin D is light green, and you see this little dotted line, okay? Pin A, red, straight battery feed that'll be a heavy orange is C and you know you get the concept so all I did is just roll them down so I know I'm gonna find my dark green and away we go all right time to do some alphabet A B C D E right A is red yellow orange so we're looking for that we're basically looking for that order red yellow orange if you look here hopefully you'll see this uh, Oh, hopefully you can see that. Hold on, guys. All right, so the red, the heavy red, it's going to be hard to see here. It's going to be the first pin right before the yellow. I don't know if you can see it. It's diving back there. That's the red. So that's A. Yellow is B. Orange is C. The other heavy red right here. Okay. Should be D. Or no. D is going to be light green, so, yep, so D is light green, which is that guy, okay, and then the heavy, oh, it's D, no, the dark green is the heavy, light green is the small gauge, right, light green small, so that's D, dark green, so we're after that heavy, that heavy dark green, which is going to be that heavy green you see right there, okay, so that's the guy we're after. I got my 5 amp test light out. We're gonna check that power feed. All right, keys on. We're tied into that dark green and you can see our 5 amp test light is holding just fine. Now if we cycle this a few times to get it to act up. Now ah, hold on. Well, it's a good thing we pulled this out and tested it because I wanna show you guys something. You see this heavy what color is that? Is that brown? It doesn't really matter. I want to show you guys. I got the key on, obviously, and we got a good power feed. Watch this cluster as I wiggle that wire. Oh, look at that. See that? Watch this. Boom. What's going on there? So, let me see what wire that is. That's this wire right here next to these two heavy reds. Now that's on C2, okay? So let's go look at the C2 connector and see what that heavy brown or black is. Well, it's not just that brown. That brown is all these three, these three heavy reds. Or I'm sorry, the two heavy reds. Those are our primary feeds to our ignition switch, guys. Our primary power feed um, to the switches. The brown feed feeds the BCM fuse um, windshield wiper fuse and cigarette auxiliary okay so the problem is in the connector I believe so let me disconnect it we're gonna take a quick inspection of it and see what it looks like all right so as soon as I took this um, connector out and reconnected it um, I sat and played around with it a lot tried tugging on the wires um, cycling the key I can't get the problem to come back so you know did we just have a pin fitment issue here? Um, I believe so. So um, my suggestion 
um, on this repair is straight up going to be, you know, there's I don't see any corrosion down in there. I don't see any damage. Um, I think these pins are just stretched out, and you know, from the flexing of these heavy cables, um, it was intermittently losing the main powers to the ignition switch. So my suggestion is going to be to tighten these up. Okay, we'll, we'll layer a coat of dielectric on there, and we will advise the customer because I do notice this. You know, like they always do, the ignition switch is starting to get a little sticky. You know, it doesn't want to release. I am going to suggest the ignition switch, but I can't. Conf you know, I can't say this ignition switch is 100% faulty. Um, I believe all we had was a pin fitment issue. So, I hope you guys liked it. I know. Um, you know, sometimes shooting the parts cannon at it. You know, we could we have put an ignition switch in this and and fix the problem probably because once you disconnect it and stuff and reconnect it problem's gone so um, does it need an ignition switch you know i'm gonna suggest one but uh no it doesn't it just had a bad pin fitment issue for the main power feeds going to it so thanks for watching guys sorry for the length hope you liked it catch you on the next one